Good morning. Welcome and happy Sabbath to our church members and visitors online and here in the sanctuary. I pray everyone is doing well today. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's um, have an opening prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for another week that we can come together. We, can, we have studied through the week, and now we can talk about what we have learned and grow and continue to serve you in whatever capacity you have us doing. Help us to share the word with others and so that they can be drawn close to you and your Holy Spirit can continue to work in our lives and we can be with you when you come in the clouds. Give us, dear God, a good Sabbath day and continue to bless us, we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone, please stand for our opening hymn, number 321, My Jesus, I Love Thee. to one Bible app, the most popular verse of 2020 was Isaiah 41.10, do not fear for I am with you. In 2019, it was Philippians 4.6, do not be anxious about anything. In 2018, it was also Isaiah 41.10. And in 2017, it was Joshua 1.9, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. We see that many are in fear of what is happening and on what's to come. For believers in Christ, we know that the Lord is our shepherd and we are his sheep. Therefore, there is no need to fear because he is with us, he leads us, he provides for our needs, 
He restores our souls, he comforts us, and he anoints us. Where are you in Psalms 23? Are you enjoying green pastures? Or are you in the depths of a dark valley? Wherever you are, continue to hold on to God's promises and trust in his care. Amen? At this time, we'll have the mission spotlight entitled Bible Studies for Little Bikers, followed by our teacher for today, Sister Gloria Benjamin, with Lesson 1, The Shepherd's Crucible. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Good morning, Sabbath School. We are off to a brand new quarter, brand new lesson study, and we are not doing a book of the Bible this time as we have done several times, but we are doing the topic in the crucible with Christ. And the crucible is not something any of us want to experience. It's something that is not so pleasant, maybe, we would think of. But we will see where we go, where the Lord takes us with these lessons, because, of course, they are going to be for our learning. Let us pray. Father, we cannot understand your word unless you teach us and show us where we are to go. So we ask you now that by your Holy Spirit that you will teach us and guide us in the studying of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I go on, I must um, ask you to 
pray for our superintendent, Sister Lucina. She's not feeling well. For the past two weeks, she has not been here. So remember her in your prayers. And I do not know if Sharon is downstairs. She is, praise the Lord, Sister Sharon is feeling so much better that she can be with her children this morning. But please remember Sister Lucina in your prayers, and we pray that she will be here with us next week. So our lesson is in the cruci the quarters lesson is in the crucible with Christ, but anywhere with Jesus, we can always feel safe. Can't we? Yes. And um, this morning's lesson is the shepherd's crucible. And I am going to ask a question. What is a crucible? What's a crucible? The dictionary explains a crucible as a ceramic or metal container in which metals or other substances may be melted or subjected to very high temperatures. Another meaning is a situation of severe tests and trials or extremely challenging experiences. And yet another, a situation in which different elements interact leading to the creation of something new. And I am looking at all of those and I see us as Christians in each of those situations. Getting into a situation with Jesus where we experience extreme temperature, persecution, test, and what have you. And I see it as a situation of the severe test, which can bring us to a situation where we are changed. And in the crucible with Christ, when we when we interact with him and he with us, we are changed into something new. We become, the Bible tells us, a new creation. We become a new creation. Anyone who has ever been in the military will tell you that they go through severe tests. I don't know that because I've not been there. Neither have I had anyone who's been there. But I was talking to a young lady this, this week, and I said, what's a crucible? She said, I don't know, but I know that a young man who has been in the military tells me that they go through severe tests and um, fasting and all of that, and at the end, when they come out of their crucible, they are totally different people. So a girlfriend who would have a boyfriend who goes into the military, and she having to interact with him later is a totally different person. It's not the same guy she, she had met before. So crucible is, um, as we can see, we go through tests, we go through suffering, and the like of it. To be in the crucible with Christ, though, will change us into something better, something good. What are some synonyms of um, crucible then? Trials, tribulation, test, ordeal, affliction. And going through a crucible moment, if you talk about you're going through a crucible moment, what would that mean to you? You're going through challenging times. Oh, we need the mics. Where are our deacons? We are going to need the mics so that, um, and if you need to speak, please just raise your hand so the deacons can see you, that you can um, speak through the mic. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not welcome our online viewers. Okay, good. So yes, challenging moments, as Tanya just told us, we might have some situations that we are going through that are challenging to us, and we would refer to that as a crucible moment. Now, this quote is lesson written by um, Gavin Anthony. They, the lessons are based on real life experiences trying moments that he has gone through, trying moments that other people have shared with him. And so he has come to, to the, the 
idea that God is there with us even through these trying moments. So it's life, life experiences that came to, that caused us to have these lessons. Sister Diane. This may be semantics. Can somebody pass my water for me, please? S semantics, but I it's find... Over there. I find that crucible, I call them crucible times because crucible, the crucible needs some time to change the elements. And our tests tend to not be um, fleeting. They tend to persist for a while because it's through that perseverance through the test that we actually become changed. So it may actually just be semantics, but I don't find it to be moments. I find it to be trying times or trying periods. And not just for a moment. Perfect. So true, not just for a moment. And this is what Sister White calls the, the work of a lifetime. Sanctification, the life of the, the work of a lifetime. We just don't become that perfect person all at once. We go through trials, we go through tests, and those who will live godly must suffer persecution. So these are tests that we would go through to make us what we want to be, or what God wants us to be. Okay, so the shepherd's crucible. No one is exempt from trials, from tests, and from sufferings. Jesus had his days of tests and sufferings, and none of us will ever be called to go through the tests and the trials that Jesus went through. He went through more than any of us would ever be able to go through because he bore our sorrows, he bore our tests, so that we did not have to go through them. Our memory verse says, he restores my soul, he leads me in the paths of righteousness, for his name's sake. We will take that up as we go through the studying of the lesson. We can be confident though that whatever the Lord allows us to experience in terms of trials and tests, in tribulations, he is there with us through it all and all things work together for good to them who loves the Lord. So let us be patient as we go through our tests and our trials with Jesus. Now, the, the, the lesson on Sabbath afternoon starts off with um, Sophie, a young lady who had a trying experience, and she was wondering why she had to go through all of that. How could somebody be gossiping about her like that? That was her trial. The trials come in different ways. Her trials come in different ways. For her, it was someone gossiping about her. But then, as she felt so depressed, and um, what's the other word I'm looking for? She felt so depressed and disappointed. She fell down. And her Bible, she opened up her Bible to the 23rd Psalm. And in that she wondered, when she read the words of God, he restores my soul. Could God be using this test to restore my soul? Could God be using this test to make me someone better? What do you think? Was God using that for, for her betterment? I would say yes, it could be that God was using that to, for her. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. We have gone to strange places, places that we should not have been. Because when God created us, he created us to be with him in a loving, consistent relationship. But what did we do? We, go, we went astray. And so here we have the shepherd's experience being brought out to us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It is important to us, for us to realize that God is my shepherd, my individual shepherd. He leads me 
individually, as he leads you individually, and he leads us corporately. God is my shepherd. Yes, Sister Diane. The mic, please. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What does it mean then when we perceive that we are experiencing want? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What does it mean when we think that we want something that we are not getting from God? What does that mean? Any, anyone would like to take the challenge? Yes, Sister Rosen. Lack of faith. A lack of faith. I have a brother in the in the back. Well, Psalm one thirty six. Uh, Wait uh, for the mic, please. Psalm one thirty six. Twenty six. The psalmist says, "His mercy endures forever." So if we know that, if we know that. He's all knowing. He knows what's good for you and what's not good for you. And that doesn't mean that he's not going to give it to you. But he's testing you before he gives it to you. Okay, I have brother, brother Carl. I, I've always interpreted to mean that the Lord is my shepherd. That's all I need. I, you know, I shall not want. I don't need anything else. As long as I believe or just accept the fact that He's leading me everywhere. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God knows everything that, that we want and that we need. Some things we want that we do not really need. And so God will supply all the things that we need for the journey that we are on. Because remember, the lesson tells us here that we are on a journey and our journey is going to lead us to the house of the Lord. All the things that we need for that journey, the Lord will supply. He will supply all our needs. It could be our wants or it could be our needs, but we do not need sometimes the extra things that we really need for a journey. We need to get rid of some of the baggages because it will, those baggages can sometimes hinder us from progressing in the way and the manner that we ought to go. So God, as our good shepherd, God as our shepherd, he will supply our needs and our wants. So we need only God to depend on. Yes, Pastor. I have a comment here online saying, sometimes our wants is not in accordance with his will. Mm -hmm. Like what you're saying. Yes, very good. Sometimes what we think we want, God knows that we do, not want, we do not need them. Our wants are not necessarily our needs. Do you understand what I mean by that? Our wants are not necessarily our needs. So God will supply. And here, here in um, Sunday's lesson, mm -hmm. we see that Jesus... Sorry, but sometimes I think it's a, a slippery slope because sometimes we don't even get our needs and we don't understand God's mystery. Like there's missionaries who did it with so much love and so much heart and they died because they didn't get even their basic needs. So we don't know. I think we can't just say he supplies everything because it's God's in, surpasses all intelligence that we can't even understand. Yes, we really do not understand all the ways of God. And as we would, would study through the quarters lesson, we will see that we go through suffering. Sometimes we are relieved, and some people are not relieved of the suffering. But we just have to rely on God. By faith, rely on him that whatever he does is the best. Whatever he does is in our best interest, Pastor. You know, it's interesting because with this crucible with Christ, if everything was pleasant, everything was wonderful, everything was great, then the idea that Satan is evil in our mind would be formed. Because it's generally the case that when everything is going well for us is when we think we don't need Jesus. 
And we fall into the trap of believing that Satan is telling us, you don't need God. And so God allows the evil to be real in our lives so we understand we're in an evil world. And there will be times when things are difficult, but we are not alone, just like the sheep are not alone from the shepherd. He's there to help us and to protect us. Amen. So that's where we are in the valley there now. But let us, let us dwell in the more pleasant paths before we get to the valley, okay? Because we notice here, first of all, um, the, the symbol of the shepherd and the sheep is given to us so we can better understand Psalm 23. I don't know why I am at this page. Yes, Brother Carl. I think sometimes we do get what we want. And uh, Some, say that again. I think sometimes we do get what we want. Uh -huh. And um, it doesn't always turn out so well. Uh, as we saw in, in the last quarter, uh, you know, the, um, the uh, patriarchs in the, in the last quarter, uh, you know, Abraham, you know, uh, and others put, you know, uh, put things, uh, in, you know, put things in their own hands. They didn't, they didn't depend on God. You know, God made a promise, and what did Abraham do? You know, he, he, uh, he, he went ahead. He went ahead on his own. And it, it, you know, although God allowed it, it didn't turn out to be really the best way. So that, that I think, is so true. I think, you know, uh, we see that we do sometimes get what we want and it's not always the right thing. <laughs> yes, yes, Pastor. A uh, comment online here from Sister Janice. We should look back at the big picture and we will see that the things we thought we wanted and didn't get were not really necessary. God knew better than we did. He protects us and knows what is best always. Amen, amen. God always knows what is best for us. And as it's been said before, sometimes we step ahead of God. It could be in a relationship. It could be in a business transaction. It could be anything, and we step ahead of God. And later on down the line, we say, how did this happen to me? because we did not wait on the Lord. We did not wait on him. And so we fall sometimes into some situations. Yes. Another comment online here says, if God is truly our shepherd, we would be content with what he blesses us with. Amen, amen. But then we have to be the obedient sheep who is willing to follow the shepherd to follow the shepherd because it is one thing for God to be leading us and notice it is about the sheep and not the goat because you see goats are stubborn and you have to pull and pull the goats but the sheep will willingly follow the master he will hear his voice he will answer to him and one of we are given several texts here relating to the shepherd before we actually get into the Psalms and one of the texts I like is um, St. John chapter 10, verses 14 through 16, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He says he knows his sheep, and his sheep knows him. The stranger, the sheep is not going to follow because this, the sheep does not know the stranger's voice. And I had a real experience with that. Several years ago, I was on a trip with a church trip with um, some brethren from Flushing. John Baxter, I don't know how many of you know John Baxter, he's a missionary, but then he was not a missionary at the time. He's a, exactly. We were on this trip and on our way back, we got to where we saw a shepherd with his sheep. The sheep were way out in the meadow and the shepherd was standing on the bank with us and we started a conversation. John was leading the conversation anyway. And he said, let me call the sheep and see if they will come to me. And John called in the way that the shepherd would have called and the sheep did not move. Mm. Then the shepherd called and the whole flock started coming Amen. to the shepherd. And then John called again, and they stopped 
right in their track. They did not move a foot. And this is Jesus. If we know his voice and he calls us, we will follow him. But there are many voices calling out there. How do we know the shepherd's voice? How do we know his voice? We have to have a relationship with him. So the constant time that we spend together, the time the shepherd and the sheep spend together, causes us to develop a relationship so that if somebody else calls, we will know, uh-uh, that's not my shepherd. That's not my shepherd, Pastor. Yes, online, uh, God tells us, be still and know that I am God for a reason. We must grow our patience to waiting and trusting with, on God. Amen. Grow in our patience and waiting. Amen, amen, amen. And so we go to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. I'm going to read it through very quickly in the King, King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so this is what this lesson is based on. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, we have talked about. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. The locations on the journey. What are some of the locations that the shepherd and the sheep encounter? The green pastures. Any, any other place? Still waters. The valley. And the final destination is the house, the house of the Lord. Now, why is it the safest thing to be led by the shepherd rather than going ahead of the shepherd? Why is it the safest thing to follow the shepherd rather than going ahead of the shepherd? The shepherd knows the way. He has been there. We do not know the way. And sheep, they say, are they one of the dumbest animals? I don't know if it's true. But they say the sheep is a dumb animal. If it is lost, I'm coming to you, my brother. If it is lost, it doesn't even know how to get, get back home. It's the, one, it's the brother behind, Brother Domingo. Yes. Yeah, it's not that the animal is dumb. It's that the animal is the one that doesn't have a defenseless system. It has no way to defend itself, so it, it, um, it depends on the pastor to take care of it. It depends so, on the shepherd. I mean the shepherd, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> the shepherd to take care of it because it doesn't have no defensive mechanism. So anything could kill it. So yeah. it's a very dependent animal. Yes, correct, just like we are. Yes. <laughs> so we depend on Jesus 100%. And we ought to realize that we ought to depend That's on right. Jesus, our shepherd. I have the pastor's hand. Comment online here says, we can trust in God's sovereignty because we know he is good, even in difficult times. We need to trust him like Jesus trusted the Father when he was going through the most difficult time. Amen. Amen. So we need to know to we need to learn to depend on the shepherd. We need to learn to depend on Jesus because he depended on his father. Jesus was God and he could he could have done he could have done things on his own, but he did not do that. He depended on his father for everything that he did. My brother in the back. Yeah, um we uh 
Back use the mic. Use back the mic. home, back home in the in my native land, so people own goats and they own uh, sheep. Yeah, they own they own all kind of animals, but the sheep is a special one. During the farm season, they have to put a cord on all the animals so they don't go and eat the, uh, corn, the people's corn field. Um, one day, the sheep, uh, the cord that you know, keep uh, the sheep uh, from uh, wandering around and eating the corn fields was broken. Nobody can, um, no one can catch the, the sheep. So, so what, they, what uh, they do, they, they have to go and find the owner of the sheep. So when the owner of the sheep comes, the sheep just walk to him. Why is that so? Because that's what Jesus said. I know my sheep. He and, knows his owner. And the sheep knows his owner. Yes. Those people are not the sheep's owner. So that's why they were not able to catch the, the, the sheep. So they will not follow the voice of a stranger. That is what I get out of, of the comment. Now, some of the places are the green pastures. And we could relate that to God supplying our needs. As we said before, he leadeth me beside the still waters. I cannot imagine a sheep going to drink from a waterfall where the water is rushing down. This sheep needs to be quiet. The water needs to be quiet so that the sheep can lie in stillness, in peace, to be restored. What does this restoration mean? What does this restoration mean? Yes. I have a comment going back to an earlier statement you made. The shadow of death is a terrible experience. However, if we follow the good shepherd, we have nothing to fear about. Amen. 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 And we will talk a little more about the shadow of death. So here we are talking about the pleasant pastures, the, 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 the pleasant pastures and all the good things. But then there comes a time Oh, a question I do not want to forget here. It says, why are these paths called paths of righteousness? And the author of the lesson gave us four specific answers. He says, first, they are the right paths because they lead to the right destination. That's on Monday's lesson. The shepherd's home. Then the second is that they are the right paths because they keep us in harmony with the right person. And who is that right person? The shepherd himself. Then third, they are the right path because they train us to be the right people, like the shepherd. So we eventually will emulate Jesus. We will be like him. Fourth, they are the right path because they give us the right witness. As we become the right people, we give glory to the Lord. So our lives become a testimony for the shepherd. They are right or righteous paths, whether the going is easy or whether it is hard. So wherever the Lord is leading us, whether it is easy or whether it is hard, it is the right path. So let us follow the Lamb. So although we may not understand sometimes, we are always to follow the leading of the Lord. Okay, now let us go to the valley. Let us go to the valley. We have been experiencing good things, but it is not always green pastures. It is not always still waters. Sometimes the journey takes us into strange places like the valley of the shadow of death. This can be a dark place. And in our Christian journey, we sometimes get to dark places. How do we get there? Did the shepherd lead us there? Did we go there on our own? 
Was the dog valley always there? We would not know because we had not gotten there yet. How do we get to the dog valley, Sister Diane? As I'm thinking about it, there are two ways to get into the dark valley. One is that the shepherd allows you to go through the dark valley because of the specific journey he's leading you on and what he wants to accomplish in your life. But the other way is if you're a goat wearing sheep's skin. Because if you're a goat wearing sheep's skin, you'll stray. You think you're a sheep. You, your intention, but your heart is not really there. And so you go into places that were never intended for you and you end up being in a valley. But are you a sheep? Because sheep don't typically do that. Goat do that. <laughs> sheep do not always go astray to those places. Goats usually do that. Are we a sheep when we get into the dark valleys? Or are we a goat? We are still the sheep that's being led by the shepherd. Or if we even got there by ourselves, if we strayed into the dark valley, the shepherd is there with us. He does not lead, I have a hand over here. He does not leave us alone or we would be totally destroyed. And before I take the hands that I have, I can recall when I was young, our pastors and leaders would tell us, um, you cannot go to such and such places. Well, we didn't go anyway, you know. But you cannot go to such and such places because if you went there, then your guardian angel would stand at the door, stand outside the door, and let you go in because he'll not follow you there. Do you think your guardian angel left you to go there all by yourself? No, no, no. If he did, we would be totally destroyed because the enemy would have all access to us. But he goes with us. The shepherd goes with us to protect us and to guard us from whatever situations we may be in. I had brought Elder David and then Pastor. I appreciate what you say when you say you describe it as a journey because that's Psalm 23. We think of it often as a straight and narrow path that's well paved and um, we just go straight ahead. It's nice and sunny, it's nice and bright, but this path, this journey has twists, it has turns. It goes uphill, it goes downhill. It's well lit, it's dark. But in the Psalm it clearly says, I won't fear no evil for thou art with me. That, that word, that promise is clear and I always think of the Job experience when he says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. That has to be the journey of the Christian in, in, in our life. And we think of those precious promises and as Carl mentioned also with the, with the patriarchs and a lot of the other uh, Bible stories that show us that these people went through trials and tribulations, but they still trusted in God. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, Pastor. Yeah, just to kind of build on what David was saying, if you look at the verse, verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So David is saying it's going to happen. And it's like the lesson brought out, the, the path isn't always pleasant. There are times of the year when that particular path may produce the valley. And so the, the point here is that David is trying to say, for you are with me. I won't be afraid, even though I walk through the valley, which he's telling us we're going to go through valleys, but we don't have to be afraid because he doesn't abandon us, which tells us the shepherd is still with the sheep even through the valley. Even through the valley. He never abandons us. He never abandons us. And even if we went astray, if we got to the valley by ourselves, he is there with us. But as I studied the lesson, I saw the, the valley as a part of the journey. It's on the path to the house of the Lord, the eternal kingdom we are really going to. It's a metaphor for the whole thing we are studying, right? And so these, these places are along the route. It's not always sunshiny. There are the dark valleys, the, the cliffs, the ravines. 
and we could fall into it unknowingly, but God is always there with us to guard and to protect us. I had Carl, and then I'll take Pastor. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking about a different metaphor here. You know, it said um, a, a good sailor never sails or doesn't learn to be a good sailor on calm waters. So, <laughs> nor would I want to be on a ship as a passenger with a captain who never sailed through a storm. So, um, you know, I, I think God gives us, he doesn't give us more than we could handle. So yes, we have to go through these dark valleys. So, unfortunately, we do. But we come out as, well, we're going through the crucible. That's what it's all about. We are being remade when we, when we have these experiences. But, we, but of course, we always have to trust God and keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. So, a uh, couple of comments from online. Janice Keep says, your hand up, Michael. We, like gold, must be refined. God's crucible is being burned in a container, and other components are added to refine it. We, likewise, need to have our characters refined by trials. And then also we have here online, uh, it says here, even as we walk through the dark valley, our God and Father... Oh, it keeps bouncing. Our God and Father is with us, carrying, carrying and leading us to his eternal path. Jesus is with us day by day, giving us power and strength to go through the dark valley of our life. Amen. I'm glad that thought came out about the gold, because that's exactly what I was thinking of. The gold tried in the fire that comes out really refined. I have Michael in the back. See, I know some of our names. I'm not hearing you. Okay. So um, I think there's a tendency to associate this particular um, psalm with war. And people have the tendency to look at it like the valley of the shadow of death, like something beyond us is threatening us. But the truth is, if we're going to keep it into the metaphor about the sheep, um, the valley exists within us. The valley is something that is accessed by the good and the evil. So if you look at it as us being sheep, um, the valley could be a choice to either feed the good wolf or the bad wolf because you get led there. No one's really talking about the effect that the devil has on bringing you into the valley. So when you end up in the valley, then I believe God's giving you a choice. You're either gonna follow him or you're gonna keep feeding the bad wolf and keep getting deeper and deeper into the valley because that's where sin happens. So I think the valley, it exists within us, and we have, we have choices to make. Amen. So you, the valley, yes, there are experiences through which we pass. There are life experiences. Your dark valley might be a relationship that's broken. Your dark valley might be the loss of a loved one. Your dark valley might be the bad news that you get that you have a terminal disease or someone you love has a terminal disease. Your dark valley might be anything that is a test, a trial, something that is crucial to your Christian experience. But how do we handle those situations with God there with us? With the shepherd there with us, we know that we are safe. We will not be afraid because we can trust in him. Though we cannot see him, we can trust his heart because we know he's there with us. Now, my question is, as you said, like this crucible, there are tests, right? And as we know, like in our school, we like we pass our fellow tests. Can we fail a crucible? That's my question. I didn't get the last part of what you said. Can we fail? Can we fail? Can we fail the test? If we're put in the crucible, oh, can, can we fail? Can we fail when the we go test. through a difficult time? Oh yeah. When put in the crucible, because you have these tests when you go through your science projects, can we fail the test? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So we have to know that we have to depend on Jesus. When we depend on Him, 
we will not fail the test. It's the choices that we make. Sometimes we make bad choices. Sometimes we make bad choices, and those bad choices lead us into situations, into dark valleys. I have Sister Diane, and then I have the pastor. I have more questions than comments today. So if you're a sheep, though, how do you fail if you know the shepherd's voice? Because the shepherd always comes after you, and he calls. And that's why I mentioned the question before about if you're in a valley, you could be a sheep that got allowed or it was part of um, the plan to purify you, but you could be a goat. And that's who will fail, right? Because that's who don't respond to the shepherd's voice to get them out of the valley, i.e. the crucible. I'll come back to you, and I'll take the pastor. Maybe well, it's good. Yeah, I can talk with that. You have to understand the sheep aren't perfect, and 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 for this illustration on Psalm 23, we really should take goats out of it, because this is not talking about goats. This is talking about the sheep. So we have to keep our focus on the sheep. The yes. goats are talked about in other illustrations another time, but Psalm 23 is talking about the sheep. So we need to stay focused on the sheep and then yeah. also understand sheep are not perfect animals. Exactly. That's why they have the shepherd. And so sheep can make mistakes. Sheep can fail the test. There's the story that a, a sheep that will not stay close to the shepherd, he will break its leg, carry it until it's healed, and then that sheep will learn never to roam again. So, you know, those stories and illustrations are there to help us to understand that we all, like sheep, have gone and astray. Honest, yes. But he's there for us. And I think that's the point. point. And online, we have a question from Sister Roxanne. says, is the focus on the valley versus the shadow of death? So, you know, these issues are there, but we always have to keep, we're sheep here in this yeah. story. And that's where we have to stay. Sheep aren't perfect. They need their shepherd. Good times, bad times, like you've been saying, we need the shepherd. And he Amen. won't abandon us. Amen. And I had brought up the goat in the beginning, but not to discuss it yeah. in this fashion. Because yes, we have the, the Matthew story where the sheep and the goat are on either side of the master. But this specific, specific lesson yeah. is talking about the sheep, how we will follow the shepherd wherever he leads us. And if we fall into situations, the shepherd is there to rescue us because we are sheep who want to reach the master's house. The, the, the destination we are on the journey is the master's house, the father's house. And notice, did I have another hand before I went on? I'm coming. Before we reach the master's house, we know that he's always guiding us, no matter where we are on our journey, he's always there with us. In My the same way you're saying yes, that, that and the same like the pastor saying that we are all sheep. We are, can you hear me? The mic. Yes, we are, we are sheep. We are sinful beings living in a sinful world. That's been an imperfect world. We cannot have a perfect life in this world. But God is saying to us, Jesus, our shepherd, is always there to guide us. Yes, we will have problems, like you said, in the valley, maybe our own choice, or may it be because we live in a sinful world, but we have Jesus to guide us through and to transform us on the way to go to heaven. Amen. And as we get closer, keep your hand up, as we get closer to the shepherd, the more we spend time with the shepherd, the more we will reflect his image, the more we will know him and live like him. Because by the time we get to his house, we are going to be perfect sheep. We are going to be perfect sheep. I have Brother Domingo and then Brother Carl. Okay, call first. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I just wanted to bring up the point that, you know, uh, when you have a test in school, you, spend out, you should spend hours studying for that test. Um, and most likely, you'll pass. Uh, that's, that's what it is. So I think it's the same thing. If we spend our time with Jesus, we have a better chance of passing these tests and getting through the crucible than if we don't. So it's really our lifestyle, how we conduct our entire lives. Uh, if we spend time with Jesus, we're in prayer, and we can, 
you know, we listen to the voice, we can uh, try to discern the correct voice to follow. Because yes, there's a lot of noise out there. Yeah, because there's so much distraction, we sometimes aren't following. Brother Domingo. Uh, yes, let's also forget that um, Matthew 24 talks about that many will come in my name. Many will come and say they're the shepherd. So we have to be very careful. And through our generations, we've seen many from Jonestown to Heaven's Gate to all these nuts that come and say that they're Jesus. So we have to also be aware of uh, who the shepherd is. We have to know him, and we are counting down on time. Pastor. Okay, one last comment from online. I think we should fully trust the shepherd and keep abiding in him, because if we trust the shepherd, it does not matter whether we are in green pastures or the valley. He is the same powerful shepherd. Amen. He never changes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are the ones who change. We are the ones who go astray from him. He never leaves or forsakes us. But we notice, too, that along the way, we are led to a table, to a banqueting table. Out of the valley, now we do not see the, the, the metaphor of a shepherd, but that of a king and his guest. And so this guest, David, David is um, here telling us, he brings him to the table. And what do you expect at the table? Bounties. Bounties. All the good things will be at the shepherd, at the, the king's table for his guest. He anoints his head with oil. That is a, a, a welcome guest. You are the honored guest at the, the king's banquet when your head is anointed with oil. And so these are blessings that God bestows on his people. Do we count our blessings? Do we count them? And blessings do not necessarily mean material things. They can be material. They can be spiritual. They, they are both material and spiritual, because the fact that I am living a healthy life Amen. is a tremendous blessing. Amen. It's a tremendous blessing. The fact that your children are walking in the paths of the Lord, it's a tremendous blessing. So our blessings come in different ways, and so the king bestows all these blessings upon us along the way. Okay. But we notice that enemies surround us. Enemies surround us. While the blessings are being bestowed on us, enemies are surrounding us. And the Bible tells us, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. It is not easy to love an enemy, is it? But we should not see people as our enemies. They can see us as as an enemy, but we should love them as a friend. And just as, just as that enemy is there and saying all the bad things and doing all the bad things, you can forgive him. We should forgive him because that is what Christians do. That is what Christians do. We do not have to wait for them to come and ask for forgiveness before we can, we can um, do that. And so we are told that, um, okay, I have a hand. Let me take the hand before I make my point. We, we just, we just uh, had two, two crucibles. We are out of time. Um, I see you. We just had two crucibles. We are out of time, so make yeah. it really short. Two. Uh, 2019-2020 up to now. The coronavirus uh, was a crucible. And the vaccine, when it came, it was also a crucible. There are those that say we should take the vaccine. There are those that say we should not take it. But we have a choice to make in our Christian walk. The shepherd is leading. We are out of time, my yeah, brother, that, so cut yeah, it off. Yeah. Give me one minute, sister. The, the shepherd is leading. The shepherd is leading. Um, to me, I think the, the, the way they make the vaccine is the theory of evolution. We are creationists. We have a choice to make. 
We have a choice to make. Thank, thank you. Let us cut that point off. Okay. And I thank you for participating in lesson discussion. And remember, as the Bible says, if it is possible, as far as it lies in your power, live peaceably with all men. That is a privilege, and we as sheep of the shepherd can do that. God bless you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Sister Gloria. You got our quarter up and running. Amen. <laughs> for those watching online, thank you for your comments. We try to get them through as much as possible. Always remember that there is a 20 second, 30 second delay in between posting your comments and questions. And so Gloria and our teachers do a good job of trying to keep up with those things. Thank you for being with us today. For our members, be sure and see uh, Charles, our head deacon, for your quarterly. If you uh, requested one, be sure and see uh, 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 Charles and the deacons to get your quarterly. For those online, if you're a member and you requested one, please check the office hours and when you can pick one up. Remember online, please. We are so thankful for the Sabbath school offering that is beginning to uh, come in. We are grateful for that. We want to encourage you to continue to do that. Remember your mission offering as well as your Sabbath school expense offering. We are ordering more quarterlies and you may be surprised at the cost of each quarterly. They are not 50 cents, they're not a dollar, and they are truly not free. And so we are thankful for all of the support that you help us with financially and getting the Sabbath school expenses covered. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for watching us. Let us close with a prayer. Father, we are grateful for a beautiful Sabbath, a wonderful discussion on the beautiful Psalm 23. Be with us this quarter as we go through these lessons. May you draw us closer to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath. Please tune in at 11 o'clock as we continue to worship together.